I often get asked how I compose a new piece. Do I improvise at the piano? Do I hear it in my head? Do I write it down with pencil and paper? Do I work at a computer? Do I start with a melody? Do I know the structure of the piece from the outset? Do I go for walks in the woods with a sketchbook, like Beethoven? The answer is that I do all these things. Though each piece is different and requires different tools, there are certain elements in my working methods that now seem consistent. I'll share those with you here by illustrating from my latest work, Whirlwind, for the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra. As part of my residency with the ESO, I am to write one short and one long work per year. In the fall of 2011, about a year before the deadline, Rob McAleer, the ESO's artistic administrator, suggested that for my short work I consider writing a, quote, dazzling overture. Good idea, I said, and agreed. But I had no idea yet for the piece itself. In the spring of 2012, I was still without ideas when my wife, somewhat offhandedly, suggested that the flight of bohemian wax wings might serve as inspiration. We had seen these birds for the first time that winter, our first in Edmonton. Watching a large flock swirling rapidly in the sky above, making razor-sharp turns in near-perfect synchronicity, had left a strong impression. So I take out my sketchbook and start imagining how I might represent the flocking motion in music. No notes at this point, mostly words with the occasional scribble depicting rising and falling motion, the changes in direction abrupt. Gradually, basic rhythms and gestures stand out more and more from the prose, and then a harmonic progression that ends up serving as the foundation of the flocking theme. About a week later, a buoyant melody comes to mind, suggesting the giddy feeling the birds evoke rather than the flight of the birds itself, and I jot it down. And I start toying with it. Will the theme work inverted, that is upside down? What about in canon? Yes, as it turns out, at the unison second and fifth. I want to be sure before committing to this theme that it has somewhere to go. I want to be able to vary and develop it over the course of the piece rather than only repeating it. Next comes a contrasting lyrical theme. And now, with three distinct themes, I start working each out in more detail. How might they be harmonized? And in the course of this, I keep exploring other ways to vary the theme. Ah, it can take on a Spanish-sounding flavor or a dance-like syncopated character? What if I take the theme's head, add a new tail, and slow it all down? That might serve as a gentle interlude. And so the sketching continued over the course of July. In mid-July, I start writing out what's called a continuity score, still in pencil. Using just two staves, enough for a piano, I work out how the piece would unfold from beginning to end, though still in sketch form. Sometimes I mark down just basic chords, or basic rhythms, or a melody. I pencil in orchestration ideas. This will be in the brass, that in the strings, this in oboe solo. I write words to describe gestures for which I have yet to figure out the notes. For instance, gushing scales in the winds and strings. There are few dynamics or articulations at this point. At the end of each system, I calculate the duration so I know exactly how long the music will be. My commission is for a work eight minutes long, not six minutes, not ten minutes. I must keep that in mind at all times. If I played this sketch on the piano, it would sound incomplete. It might give the listener some idea what the piece is like, but there's so much detail missing that it would not even be satisfactory as a piano reduction. Thirteen days after I had begun the continuity sketch, I pencil in the last chord. I feel like the piece is done. Except it isn't. Sure, all the materials are there, the structure is there, I know how it goes, but the devil is in the details. And the details are still missing. Sometimes working out the details and orchestrating is comparatively easy. In this case, it was not. I now move from piano, desk, and pencil and paper to the computer. My first task is to enter my continuity sketch into a full orchestral score. It's a very early draft, so it will be far from complete. But for each bar of the sketch, I need to put the music somewhere in the orchestra. 
I can and will change a lot of these initial decisions later, but I have to commit to something now. Once that's done, I print out the entire score and take out my red pen. I will now go back to the desk and piano and fill in all the gaps and make many revisions to my first stab at the orchestration. Sometimes the changes are so extensive that the marked up score gets too messy to read. So I highlight sections and on separate manuscript paper write out the new lines and into what bars they're to be inserted. That package of multicolored highlighters comes in handy on pages with many, many additions. During this process, I fire off emails to the musicians of the orchestra with little excerpts from the score. Will this tricky figure work on the double bass? How about this melody in the low range of the trumpet? I show the harp part to Nora Bumanis, principal harp, during a break in the rehearsal. She demonstrates a better way to achieve the effect I'm after in a particular passage. I gratefully incorporate her suggestion. I get to the end of this draft by mid-August. Once again, I feel like the piece is done. Well, it's much, much closer, but still far off. Eleven days later, after entering all the corrections and revising still more, this time directly on the computer screen, and adding in all the details, dynamics, articulations, style and tempo indications, rehearsal letters, and so on, not to mention the tedious but important job of engraving to ensure the music is laid out cleanly with everything aligned and spaced correctly, I have a near final score. ESO staff member Krista Erickson helps with the proofreading. Then I send the final materials to the printer. I am finally done. A week later, the materials arrive. It is deeply satisfying to hold the printed conductor score in my hands. The piece now exists at least on the page, in an ideal form. On another level, it doesn't really exist at all until a conductor and musicians bring it to life in performance. That important collaboration is the topic of another slideshow. My name is Robert Rival, composer in residence with the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra. I hope you have the opportunity to hear Whirlwind live in concert. Thank you for watching.